Hi, this is Wayne Wagner from Visionary Wealth Management. Today we're going to do a quick primer on 401ks. Lots of people have access to a 401k through their employer and when you're young, you're thinking about you know putting money away for what may be 30 or 40 or 50 years and it can be seen kind of daunting. And I want to go from kind of 101 very basic 401k planning all the way up to you high income folks who may be watching and more strategic thinking about your 401k. Okay, so first, when it comes to investing in your 401k, you're typically putting money in on a tax deductible basis and you're getting some kind of a match from your employer depending on the size of your employer, how profitable they are, those kinds of things, the match typically will be somewhere between 50 and 100 cents on the dollar up to some percentage, maybe it's 3% or 6%. So that's all dependent on the individual plan, the individual company that you work for, and it's fair to all employees in that they have to do the same match for all employees across the board. So they can't jam a whole bunch of money in there for the executives while they're stiffing the guy who's working on the line or the entry level worker. On a percentage basis, they have to contribute the same amount. In fact, the IRS only allows companies to match compensation up to what's called the Internal Revenue Code Income Threshold leave it to the IRS to come up with words and phrases like that. The Internal Revenue Code Income Threshold it right now is around $285,000 to $290,000. So if you make more than that in base and bonus, you could end up actually getting stiffed by your employer because they're actually not allowed to match contributions on your compensation above that threshold. We'll do a different video at a different time about non-qualified deferred comp plans and you'll probably want to grab that video at some point to learn how to integrate your non-qualified deferred comp plan with your 401k to most effectively get all the matching contributions you can from your employer. So contributing early is, is really key. Contributing up to the threshold that you can uh, to make sure you're getting all of your company match is very important. Here's the next thing. I mentioned that most of us put money away on a pre-tax basis here. If you are married filing jointly and you make less than, let's say, $300,000 a year in adjusted gross income, you may want to consider not taking the tax deduction right now and so actually seeing if your plan will allow what's called a Roth 401k contribution. Now people would say, Wayne, are you crazy? I'm in the 24% tax bracket and you're telling me I shouldn't take the tax deduction and you want me to go ahead and pay taxes on money that I'm putting away for 20, 30, 40 years? The short answer is yes. Here's my logic. My logic is that historically we're in a pretty low income tax environment and if you, like me, think that our government is spending too much money, then the likely scenario down the road is that income tax rates probably gravitate up. That means you may be taking a tax deduction today getting tax deferred growth on that money for that 20, 30, 40 years. And then when you go to take that money out, you're gonna end up paying income taxes potentially at a higher rate on all of it. So essentially what the government's doing in farming jargon is they're giving you a tax deduction on the seed, tax deferred growth on the crop, and then they're gonna tax the entire harvest. And if you die without pulling it all out and you leave it to your kids, the current tax law is your kids have to take it all out within 10 years. So think about that for a minute. That could have the effect of pushing your children into much higher tax brackets if they have to drain all your retirement savings in a finite period of time. Now, the right answer is not 
do nothing and die poor. That's not the right solution here. The right solution is to utilize that Roth 401k, especially if your income is below about that $300,000 to $305,000 that married filing jointly, your income is not gonna be taxed at above 24% right now. Take advantage of that. Go ahead and pay the tax rate, the known tax rate of 24% right now, and get tax deferred growth and tax free withdrawals on all of that Roth contribution and growth on that money. So think about that. Now, if your income is above that 300,000, here's some strategic planning for you that's along the same line. If you're making more than $300,000 a year and you're kind of easily getting to that 20 plus thousand dollar contributions on your part, the company is matching those contributions. Maybe you get to 50 and you're doing your catch up contributions. And so you're doing all of those things and that's kind of 101 planning, 201 planning, 301 planning. Now it's graduate time. Now it's time to think big picture. If you can afford to put after tax money into your 401k, even after you've maxed either the pre-tax amount or the Roth amount that you have put in for the year, if you can afford to put more money in, do it. Put after-tax money into your 401k after you've hit the contribution limits, if your plan will allow it. Here's why. If you're able to afford to do that, you're probably in one of those higher income tax brackets and the conversation's gonna come back, but Wayne, now I'm in the 32 or 35 or 37% bracket and you're telling me to put after tax money in my 401k and I'm gonna say yes, because you probably don't qualify to do a Roth IRA out of your savings, where if you make under a certain threshold, you do qualify to do a Roth IRA contribution outside your 401k. But if you're in those higher income tax brackets, you don't qualify. The IRS won't let you, but here's a graduate level secret in tax planning. All of that after tax money that you jam in your 401k, when you leave your company or when you retire under current tax law, you can roll that money directly into a Roth IRA. So for those of us who are in those higher income tax brackets, that after tax money into the 401k becomes a fantastic planning tool for us to get Roth contributions set aside today. We're planning strategically ahead. So 101 planning, participate in your 401k, make sure you're getting the match contributions. 201 planning, think about doing Roth contributions instead of pre-tax contributions. 301 planning, make sure that you're regularly rebalancing your 401k. Make sure that you are doing the catch up contributions if you've hit 50 and above. And then 401 graduate level planning, if you can afford to put all of the contributions that you already are and more, go ahead and jam after tax money into your 401k so that you can preemptively prepare to roll that money into a Roth IRA upon retirement or separation from your company. As always, we here at Visionary Wealth Management are here with perspective for the decisions ahead. If we can help you with this or any other area of your planning, please don't hesitate to reach out. Have a great day.